Domain and range refer to the values of a function that are acceptable or that are allowed within the function. So in other words, this means what numbers or values can you actually find on the graph? And we will see that putting a graph and then finding the domain and range is actually a really good method in order to do this to see what the values are. So just even before we go into any detail here, so domain, these are the x values. And domain usually comes first when you say this. You say domain and range. And then range, these are the y values that are included in our function. So domain, x, range, y. So I have a definition here. It's the set of real numbers for which the function is meaningful which the function is meaningful. So this means, is it on the function? It being the number, is it on the function? Does it exist on the function? If it doesn't exist, then it cannot be in the domain. And this will limit our sets in terms of what we say is part of the domain and what we say is not part of the domain. So we have an example here. So we have square root of x plus 2. So I can do a quick sketch of this. So square root of x and then plus 2 means that we're shifting it opposite. So it goes two units to the left. So if this is minus 2, then f at x looks something like this. So the domain says what x values are allowed on this graph. So x equals minus 2, that's in, that gets a tick. x equals minus 4, that's not in the function. So that's excluded. And then anywhere from minus 2 going to positive infinity, these are all part of the function. So even way out here, we know that the function continues on and that value will be part of the function. So here f at 4 equals root 6. That's fine. That's a good value. That's in there. That's not meaningful. f at negative 4, and that's the one that I've sketched. Of course, it's not part of the actual graph, and so that one is, in this case, not meaningful, and it's not part of the domain. So what is the domain in this example? So the domain is everything bigger than minus 2. And how do we say this in math? We say, what is bigger than minus 2? Well, that's greater than x equals minus 2. So the domain is x bigger than and including minus 2. And that's it. You might also want to say that it's part of the real numbers. So you might say that these x values are an element of the real numbers. So x, epsilon, and then a capital R with two lines. So that means all the decimal numbers in between. Range, now here in my title I'll say range means y values. So domain was x values, range means y values. So if I think back to my graph, this was minus 2, and it proceeds like so. The range now is all of the y values. So this is the y axis here. So the range is everything that's included in the graph. So y equals minus 1, this is not in the function. y equals 0 is here. y equals some positive x value is here. Um, if x equals 0, then we have root 2, and that's right at the intercept, so that's also in. And going on here to positive infinity.
So is there a value of x for which f at x equals minus 4? No. So f at x equals minus 4. Let's go and see on my graph. f at x is the output, and minus 4 is down on the y-axis. And so it, you might think that there's a value out here if I were to continue this line, but no, actually, because I'm not allowed to have any negatives, right? for a square root function here, so I'm stuck. So there is no value there. So what is my range in this case? So my range on the y-axis is starting at zero and it's everything bigger than zero. Starting at zero and it's everything bigger. And it includes that zero value. So the range is y greater than or equal to 0 and let's say that y is an element of the real numbers so it's counts all the decimal places all the way up to infinity right so greater than 0 means all the way to infinity for some notation, there are basically two ways that we'll write down what the domain and the range are. So I've got three quick examples here, and I'll go through them. And this is one of my notations. It involves round, and there's a square bracket. So round, 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 and or square brackets. Uh, and then you say what the domain and the range is. The second way down here is just saying the greater than or less than the inequalities for the domain and range, which we saw in the last example. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do here is just go to the, go to my graph. So f at x equals 3x minus 7. So in Desmos, you can actually type f at x. And that is the same as saying y equals 3x minus 7. And I can see now that these two lines, the green and the blue, are the same. Those are on top of each other. Okay, so looking at my line, the domain is all the x values that are part of it. So along the x-axis and the range is along the y-axis. So here it looks like everything that's on screen at least, from minus 2 up to plus 6. And what you can do is just zoom out to see if the line ever stops. But since it's a line, actually it keeps going. So if I were to sketch this line, It looks something like this, and I usually draw arrows on the end of my lines, unless I get lazy. And those arrows indicate that it keeps going all the way to infinity. So even though on Desmos here, I do not see arrows, I can be assured that as I zoom out, the line continues, right? That's what a line is. It's not a line segment, but it's the whole line. And now as I go up, that's going to be to plus infinity, and as I go over to the right, this will also be to plus infinity. So my domain, the x values, well, it goes this way to positive infinity, and it goes this way to negative infinity. And so that's my domain, and it's exactly the same with the range So positive infinity is up and negative is down. And so that's my range. And all straight lines have this behavior except those two special cases. So the horizontal line uh, will only have a range at that value and then the vertical line will only have a domain at that single value. Okay, let's look at my next one. F at x equals x squared. We'll delete that line. So I can type y equals x squared. And let's reset my zoom by clicking the home button. That looks good. Okay, so now for my domain, it's all of the x values. So I can see I have my parabola at minus three. There it is at nine, minus two, minus one, zero. I don't quite see anything at six, but I can zoom out until the parabola crosses 
at 6. Now I can change my graph settings here. If I want to widen this parabola, I'll set this to, let's say, 20. And this one as well to 20. And we can see here that it does cross at 6. And these arms of the parabola will keep going to positive infinity both left and right. So the domain, the x values, is all the way out here to positive infinity, all the way to the left. The range goes all the way up, but then on the way down, we have nothing below zero. Let's see if I can plot this region here that will never ever get reached by my graph. So this looks something like uh, y is less than zero. So this region, let's do orange. So this region here in orange, right, the parabola will never ever get there. So that is excluded from the range. So how do we write that down? Well, we can just write negative infinity and positive infinity for the domain. And this then implies that this is from on the left to on the right. So maybe I'll say here left to right. And then the range, this goes from bottom to top. So the bottom value starts at zero or negative to positive, and the top value goes all the way to infinity. So negative comma positive x, and then negative comma positive y. Uh, let's make a note about the square versus the round bracket. So the square bracket includes the value zero. So the square bracket is inclusive and the round bracket is exclusive. So let's go back to my plot. The range starts at zero and zero's in the graph. There it is, zero, zero. And you can keep zooming in to convince yourself that zero actually is on the graph. But on the way up to infinity, you can't actually get to infinity. So infinity is a special concept. It's not really a number. You can't do mathematics or algebra with infinity. It just means something really, really far away. And so infinity, we can't reach it, so it doesn't include that value. So we have to give it a round bracket saying up to but not including. And so if the zero had a round bracket, it would be you know everything up to um, minus 0 0.000001, everything really close, but not including it. Let's look at this third example, square root of x minus five. So Desmos has a keyboard down the bottom if you can't find your functions. So here's my root sign and then x minus five all under the root. And so this is a shift to the right by five units. So looking at the graph, we can see that there's actually quite a bit that's excluded from the domain and from the range. So for my domain, the x values, five is there and everything bigger than five to the right is there, but everything smaller than five is not there. So for the domain, you could say x is greater than or equal to 5. And let's plot what's not here. I could say x is less than 5. So in red there, that's not part of my function. Now that's not all, right? For the range, I also have the same as before. y less than 0 was also 
not part of the function if I put, put them both in red. So we can see here all the white values to infinity are included, but the red values will never get reached. So my second method of writing this down says just greater than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to 0. Now I may also have got lazy here and want to say that x and y are real numbers. This is to distinguish from other numbers, for example the integers which are 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, and don't include decimal numbers. So we'll have that distinction there but the real numbers. Okay, let's look at two more examples of domain or range. So one and two, and then I'll leave three and four for you to play around with. So x squared plus five, we've already seen a standard parabola. Something like this. And then by the time we shift it up five units, the parabola will start at zero comma five and then go up to infinity. And even though it looks like the arms are going up, they also go to the side. They go out. Um, even though it goes slowly, it will keep on going further and further out to infinity. So even though it's slow, it goes this way to positive infinity, and it goes this way to negative infinity. Um, okay, so the domain is everything, positive and negative infinity, so we can just write domain, and then we can do from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range starts at the point I've already drawn there, point zero comma five. And the range excludes, let's draw what it excludes. The range excludes all of this below that value. So for the range, um, I won't mix notation here, so I'll use my bracket notation. So it goes from five all the way up to infinity. So infinity never gets a square bracket. And is 5 included? That's what we want to think about. So if you sub in where that point is, if you sub in x equals 0, back here, if I sub in x equals 0, then I get y equals 5. And so 5 is absolutely included. It gets a square bracket. The next one looks interesting, square root of, and then an x squared minus four. So let's go to Desmos and take a look at this. So square root of x squared minus four. Let's clear this. So there's already a square root. Square root of x squared. Let's do a default zoom. Now there's an interesting one by itself square root of x squared, but this one actually has a minus four on it. Okay, so I thought it looked a little bit strange and you can see here from Desmos the nature of the graph. Let's zoom out a bit just to be convinced that we understand what's happening here. So down here it looks curved and then these look like straight lines going out to positive infinity both ways on x and positive in y. Okay, so there's some values in the middle here that are missing from my graph. And it looks like it's missing between plus and minus two. And there's nothing there. So those need to be excluded from the domain. So if I try to sub in x equals zero, so 
So if I try to sub in x equals 0, I get y equals square root 0 squared minus 4. So 0 is gone. So y equals the square root of minus 4. Now, square root functions in the real numbers, they always have to be positive. And you can see this on the graph. They only go positive. So here, it's square root of negative 4 actually does not exist. So I tried to sub in x equals 0 right here. And indeed, on my graph, it does not exist. And you'll find the same all the way up to plus and minus 2. Now, in the complex number system, which has slightly different rules from the real number system seen here, uh, you can find the square root of a negative number using imaginary numbers. But we won't get into imaginary numbers here. OK, so the domain then excludes minus 2 to positive 2. What about on those values? Do they exist? Let's sub in x equals positive 2 and see how that looks. So now y equals 2 squared is 4 minus 4. And that then equals the square root. 4 minus 4 is 0. And square root of 0 does indeed exist equals 0. So on the boundary there, the plus and the minus 2, that exists. OK, so for this example then, domain is everything up to minus 2. So we can say here x is less than or equal to minus 2. That's one way to do it and x is greater than or equal to 2. Or we could do two sets of brackets. So I could say minus infinity all the way up to minus 2 square brackets. And then starting at positive 2 and going to positive infinity. So we can see here that we have two sections included in the domain. The range is everything bigger than 0. If I were to plot it, everything bigger than, including 0. So we can just say y is greater than, equal to 0. So range y greater than or equal to 0. I'll leave exercises 3 and 4. I'll leave exercises 3 and 4 for you to do. So check out Desmos or any other uh, graphics calculator package that you may like to use and play around with uh, and figure out this domain and range.